All right, hello kiddos, welcome back. We are on a um, new unit. We are now on weather and climate. And today's lab is going to be all about um, greenhouse gases and global warming and the greenhouse effect. So what we're going to need to complete this lab is a jar to serve as our greenhouse, two thermometers labeled one and two. You can see this one is one and this one is two. And then we are going to need a data table to record our information down. Now, I would highly suggest you write down the information with me as you watch the video so you are prepared to make your graphs at the end of the video. But I will continue to record with you. Now, what we're going to do first, oh, and you also need a timer. So I have my phone here to be a timer. What we're going to do first is we are going to use our sun, which is a heat lamp, and we are going to put both thermometers under the sun for three minutes and we're going to record what temperature it is in that three minute mark okay and we will record that under the three minutes now after that three minutes up then we're going to put thermometer number two underneath the jar like so flipping it over to show that it's in a greenhouse and we're going to see how the temperatures of the two thermometers change as one stays in the greenhouse and the other is outside of the greenhouse Okay, all right, let me make sure I have my marker here, ready to go, and my timer. Okay, and the first one is going to be three minutes, and I'm going to hold them equal distance from my lamp, right next to each other, and I'm going to go ahead and hit start, and we are now waiting three minutes to see what would happen. Now, as we wait, I'm going to try to talk to you guys a little bit about the idea of this greenhouse gas and um, greenhouse effect. I made a nice little chart here for you to show you a few different things um, to help you understand uh, global warming. Number one, there are four different types of greenhouse gases. Those types of gases are methane, CO2, which is carbon dioxide, water vapor, and nitrous oxide. Now, these greenhouse gases serve as little gases in the atmosphere that trap heat. And they trap that heat so that Earth can maintain its warmth, okay? Now, if you can see my pretty little picture here of Earth, I know I'm a beautiful drawer. The sun is going to bring down radiation. Those little bubbles represent our greenhouse gases. Those greenhouse gases take in that heat. Now, some of the radiation will get bounced back off, which is why you see some arrows bouncing back of off of Earth back off of Earth and back into space, but a lot of that heat will get absorbed by our greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Now, humans impact the greenhouse effect a lot because we burn fossil fuels, and fossil fuels release a lot more of these greenhouse gases into the environment, which means there's a lot more there for us to um, capture the heat. So that means a lot, a lot of heat's being captured, which means it's going to increase our temperature overall by a lot. So that is one way that humans impact this. Another is deforestation. Deforestation means that we are cutting down trees. We cut down trees for a lot of different reasons. We use trees for paper. We use them for building things. We, a lot of times, will uh, to tear down trees to build different buildings in their place. Um, and that deforestation is taking away how much, um, how much carbon dioxide is being taken in by plants because remember back to photosynthesis we take in oxygen and we give off carbon dioxide as humans plants take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen so when we cut down a lot of these trees they're not taking in as much carbon dioxide which means more carbon dioxide is going into the atmosphere which means more greenhouse gases are able to take in that heat and it increases our heat now, if it would get too hot, we would not be able to sustain life on Earth. So it's important that we take preventative steps to make sure that it doesn't get too hot and we're able to sustain life. So that's the background between global warming and greenhouse effect. And we got 30 seconds here before we take a look at our thermometers. And I am going to stop it here as soon as it hits the 30 minute mark. Okay. And we are going to evaluate how many degrees 
it is on each of these. Thermometer number two is right at 30 degrees Celsius. Thermometer number one is at 29 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to record that here. Yes, I am using Celsius. All right, now thermometer number two is going to go into my jar. And my jar is going to go onto the heat. And now I'm going to wait three more minutes. And we're going to wait till we're at the six minute mark. It noticed that they were about the same because they both were in the light for three minutes. So one was at 29, one was at 30, they're about the same. Now this glass jar is serving as our greenhouse. So when I take a look at our temperature, I am not going to open up the jar because I would be letting all the heat out. And the glass basically shows what the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere do. It's going to trap that heat inside and make it warmer in there. And you're going to see that the temperature inside the jar will increase more rapidly than the temperature outside the jar because of that glass trapping the heat. So it's very important we don't lift up the jar because then we'll be releasing all of the heat. So I'm going to do my best to read the thermometer as is upside down and in the jar. We are at the four minute mark. This is a little bit of a lengthy lab. We are waiting to the six minute mark. We are currently at 427. Got a little time left. I did not show you my board last time, but I will show it to you. Our two readings from last time were 29 degrees Celsius for thermometer one and 30 degrees Celsius for thermometer two. I put a little GH next to thermometer two, so you know that's the one in the greenhouse. Now remember that greenhouses are not just talking about the greenhouse effect in the environment, but we also use greenhouses for plants. Uh, we use a glass building like our jar and we put plants in there so that they are able to sustain life even when it's really cold, like during the winter months, they're able to stay nice and warm because they have that um, glass container trapping that heat for them. So it works the same way. And we are at five minutes, we're about there. Well, we're going to have to read it here. Both of them should increase. It's just a matter of how much. We got 30 seconds. And I'm not going to stop my timer this time. I'm going to let it just keep going. All right, so we are at that six minute mark. So taking a look at thermometer number one, it appears to be at 31 degrees Celsius. And thermometer number two appears to be at 32 degrees Celsius. So they each went up, but thermometer two went up just slightly a little bit more. Well, actually, they both went up by two, so they're both about the same because thermometer one started at 29. But right now, thermometer number two is higher with 32 degrees Celsius. And we're just at that seven minute mark.
All right, at that eight minutes, we have one more winnet, and we're gonna check our temperatures again. We have 30 seconds. Then we're going to be checking our thermometers again. All right, we're at that nine minute mark. Time to take a look. Looks like we're at 31 still at thermometer number one. And thermometer number two, gonna do my best to read this accurately. Looks like we're right at the 35 mark. 35 degrees Celsius. So you can really tell it started taking off here. You're seeing the gap between thermometer one and thermometer two. Now we wait till our 12 minute mark. My hand's getting tired. Be in the sun. And notice that our thermometer one hasn't changed hardly at all. It's not increasing the amount of heat. It's saying it's at a 29, then 31, then 31. Whereas our um, thermometer number two started at 30, went to 32, went to 35. So it's increasing at a, at a nice rate. We're at the 10 minute mark. We have one more minute, so we're taking a look at the thermometers again. We'll be at the 12 minute mark. Mark my camera. We got 20 seconds, so we're taking a look again. All right, we just hit the 12 minute mark, so I'm gonna take a look at this one again. This one seems to be at 32. So small rise there, degrees Celsius. And this one is looking to be at, I'd say 44 degrees Celsius. The marker's kind of going out on me, but I will let you see our data collection so far. For thermometer number one, oops, sorry, I get you. Thermometer number one, it shows 29, 31, 31, 32. For thermometer two, we're looking at 30, 32, 35, and 44. Oh, goodness. 
and now we're waiting for our 15 minute mark. We're at 13.19. Gotta switch hands here. We're at 14 minutes. All right, we're at that 15 minute mark. I'm looking at thermometer number one. Thermometer number one appears to be at, I'd say 31 degrees. So it went down a little bit. The marker is not wanting to work. And thermometer number two looks to be at about 44, I would say. I don't think it's gone up anymore. Okay, so not much improvement on either side there. And now we're waiting till our 18 minute mark. Since my Expo marker is not wanting to work, I went ahead and rewrote out 
the time or the data table so you guys can see it a little bit better on paper here. Here's our data collection so far. You will have to take this data and create a graph from the data in um, Google Sheets. All right, we're at the 18 minute mark. And at the 18 minute mark, it looks like this one is right at the 30 mark. So it is going down a little bit. And this one looks to be right about 42. This one's going down a little bit too. And you know what? There could be a couple of reasons why it's going down. Maybe I have been holding my light um, unevenly or not close enough. So I'll need to be a little bit more precautious to make sure that I'm getting accurate data. And the next data will be collected at 21 minutes. We're at 20 minutes, we got one more minute, so we're collecting again. Hopefully we'll see this data go up rather than down. We had about 20 seconds till we're reading again. All right, we're at 21. I'm gonna go ahead and read this. This looks to be at, I would say 34. Going in the right direction, that's good. And this one is, I'm going to say 52. Dramatic jump there. So last try, I was probably being a little bit shaky and not keeping my lamp, uh, lamp the correct distance away. That's why it's very important you keep everything consistent, otherwise it can skew your results. Quick little uh, pop quiz question for you. What makes any experiment more accurate? What would make an experiment more accurate? And your answer would be more trials. The more trials we did of this um, experiment, the more accurate data it would yield because you would take an average or a mean of the information. So the more you do, the better the results you get because it will not allow outliers and your data to skew all of your results. We're waiting at the 24 mark. Right, right now we're at 2209. And this will be our last reading. About a minute and 20 seconds.
got about 45 seconds remaining. Thirty seconds, we're almost there. All right, we are about there. Our last reading for thermometer number one is right at 35 degrees Celsius. And thermometer two, we are very clearly at, I would say, 57 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my very, very hot lamp. Woo, looks dark in here now, doesn't it? <laughs> and we'll allow our light to adjust, there we go. And let's take a look at our data one last time. You will need to look at the next video that I have put on Google Classroom as well as this one to learn how to take this data and put it into a uh, graph. It will be a line graph. Um, and we will put this on our weather and climate blog page. So take a look at that video next and make sure you have all this data recorded and you will use this data to create your graph to show how a greenhouse impacts the increase in temperature. All right, till next time guys, see ya.